welcome again we are talking about intracranial hemorrhages and in that series today we are going to discuss intraparenchymal hemorrhage now again the origin here is arterial <coughs> but the hemorrhage will not happen along the dura or below the dura or in subarachnoid space hemorrhage will happen within uh, brain parenchyma that's why it is known as uh, intraparenchymal hemorrhages and common sites it can happen anywhere but common sites are putamen thalamus pons cerebellum and even uh, the white matter and the common cause is uh, hypertension so it is associated with increase in blood pressure uh, associated finding are usually the cardiomegaly or cardio hy cardiac hypertrophy which is partially attributed to hypertension the hypertension will also cause uh, retinopathy hypertensive retinopathy so these are all associated finding which you can see in this patient now here because it is in uh, within the brain parenchyma onset is usually rapid uh, with hemiplegia or loss of consciousness or other focal neurological deficits the investigation of choice is uh, non contrast ct as always and it will show you a uh, hyperdense area as it is shown here and this hyperdense hemorrhagic area is usually surrounded by hypodense area if you can see this i should remove this so that to give you a better picture so this hyperdense area is surrounded by hypodense area usually and this is due to the edema but hemorrhagic area is usually hyperdense you can see even sometimes blood in ventricle region also and this will cause pressure and mass effect other investigation that you can do is mri and mri actually here has an edge over ct scan because mri is more sensitive uh, in picking up hemorrhages within the brain parenchyma and with mri you can also uh, see the blood clot signal characteristic changes with uh, time after bleed has happened uh, csf will give you the blood in it and if it is a very uh, large one then obviously it will require uh, surgical evacuation otherwise conservative measures can be tried hypertension should be controlled uh, and comatose patient requires intracranial pressure monitoring and obviously the use of anticoagulants is avoided so thanks for watching all the four sessions uh, we will come up soon with more new videos on more new topics if you like our channel do subscribe uh, to it and we will love to have your feedbacks on our lectures or the topics that you want to learn from us in the future thank you